How's it going, everyone? This is Brother Dave here from Rod of Iron Baptist Ministries and Fellowship. Just wanted to give you a, a brief little uh, history here of the heresy of Christian Zionism. Now, right now, we're on the brink of, uh, I suppose, World War III, what have you. And um, I think really the only uh, way to get Zionist, neocon, so-called Christians more on board with it is if you factored Israel into the equation. Of course, uh, <laughs> many of these Zionist uh, preachers, uh, I'm convinced, would, would readily sacrifice their firstborn uh, in World War III if it meant uh, giving more land to Israel. And, um, you know, of course... They're all a bunch of fat slobs. They'll never, most of them have never served in the military, nor will they ever. Uh, but uh, yeah, you, they'll they'll be more than happy to send your kids to go die if it means protecting their little sacred cow over there in the Middle East. And you know, it's been a while. I, I need to preach a sermon here, but without further ado, let's begin. Um, <clears throat> I love to read. Mostly just the Bible, but uh, I also do love to read history, mostly. Um, I, I find that stuff fascinating, and uh, particularly, you know, in the realm of Christian history, I think there's a lot to uh, lot to look into, and, and uh, it's just really fascinating. But specifically with this doctrine of Christian Zionism, uh, the idea that uh, the so-called Jews are still the people of God, even though they reject the Lord Jesus Christ, even though they are so virulent and hateful toward the Word of God, toward uh, God's actual people, New Testament Christians. But this, this false idea that says that there's still some, the, these Jews, or the synagogue of Satan, as Jesus called them, are, are somehow still the people of God. And, and that's a fallacy. That is a false doctrine. It's a dangerous false doctrine, a satanic heresy, in fact, that uh, has devolved even into a political movement uh, that has nothing to do with the Lord. <laughs> so I just want to give you a brief little synopsis of how this Levin uh, began to infiltrate the church. I'd like to read here from the book of First Thessalonians, chapter number 2, uh, verse number 14. The uh, Apostle Paul here, under inspiration of God, writes, For ye, brethren, became followers of the churches of God which in Judea are in Christ Jesus. For ye also have suffered like things of your own countrymen, even as they have of the Jews, who both killed the Lord Jesus and their own prophets, and they have persecuted us, and they please not God, and are contrary to all men, forbidding us to speak to the Gentiles that they might be saved, to fill up their sins alway, for wrath is come upon them to the uttermost. Now, I just read straight out of the King James Bible there. Everybody's got one of these things on their shelves, practically, right? But just those verses that I read, not even giving my own commentary or anything, that would be enough to put me on the hate list of the uh, uh, Southern Poverty Law Center, or the ADL, the Anti-Decency League, as I call them. <laughs> but, you know, this is the truth, and this is what Christians have historically believed up until not even 200 years ago. St. Paul wrote here that, and this is the Word of God, by the way, the inspired Word of God, that the Jews killed the Lord Jesus, there in verse 15. So that's not just my opinion, that's God 
explaining that that's what happened. They killed Jesus. They murdered the Lord Jesus Christ. The Jews did. And he goes on in verse 16 that they forbid uh, him, Paul, and, and other Christians to preach to the Gentiles, to preach them the gospel, to tell them about the free gift of salvation through faith in the Lord Jesus Christ, that they might be saved. And then he says here that wrath has come upon them, the Jews, to the uttermost. And this is historically what Christianity has taught. I mean, this is, you know, should be kind of a no-brainer. It's right there in black and white in the Word of God. And so if you go all through throughout history, I mean, that's what Christians have taught. I mean, you, you go all through uh, the early church and all the hundreds of years later through the Reformation. I mean, that was... It, there was no question. There was no debate there. I mean, I'm sure there might have been some heretics, some Judaizers coming in there. There's nothing new under the sun, but Paul dealt with that at, uh, at the church at Galatia, in fact. So there were, but th this was not the mainstream Christian view that the synagogue of Satan are still God's people. That that didn't come along till much later. Let's fast forward a little bit to the uh, 1800s, 1830s thereabout. There's a man by the name of John Nelson Darby. And John Darby was over there in England. He uh, had a sect. Now, I, I would call it a cult. But... For historical purposes, we'll just say a sect, and they were called the Plymouth Brethren. And John Darby, who, by the way, wrote his own Bible, which changed verses significantly to uh, reflect his his uh, Zionist uh, Judaizing leanings, wrote his own Bible, changed the Word of God, so, I mean, that alone makes him damned. But he began to teach uh, what, what is known as the uh, pre-tribulation rapture, that Jesus was coming back at any moment. There were going to be no signs preceding it, which the Bible says something completely different about that, which uh, I already preached a sermon on that, the King James Bible versus the pre-tribulation rapture, if you want to listen to that. Um, or just read your Bible. Either way, you'll, <laughs> you'll come to the same conclusion. But he, he taught that uh, the Christ-rejecting synagogue of Satan were still God's chosen people. And, of course, John Darby's, th these ideas were, they went nowhere, from, from my understanding. I mean, there's, there's, people looked at this guy and they said, okay, he, this guy's a heretic, he's nuts, he, it, this went nowhere, initially. <clears throat> but let's fast forward through the 1800s, about the turn of the century, early 1900s, we have a man by the name of Cyrus Schofield, C.I. Schofield. And Schofield had some issues of his own, of course. Um, Schofield had a dubious, shall we say, uh, career in, in the Civil War, uh, likely embellished a lot of of the, his war stories. Uh, had some kind of shifty business practices. Uh, abandoned his wife. Uh, then remarried and uh, became a pastor. And. So Schofield, he, he had some issues. 
as well, some moral failures and, and so forth. But what Schofield did was he basically took John Nelson Darby's Zionist notes and essentially repackaged them into what would become the Schofield Reference Bible. C.I. Schofield essentially became the propaganda meister for Darbyism in his Schofield Reference Bible, which was published in the early 1900s uh, by Oxford. And uh, I wonder who helped fund that. Hmm. But uh, this Schofield Bible was very incredibly influential. That was when these doctrines really began to take off. Because Schofield, he had some backing, let's just say. The Zionists from the synagogue of Satan used him as their mouthpiece to get these heresies into Christian churches. And so the Schofield Bible just exploded. It was picked up, of course, by uh, Dallas Theological Seminary, a very large seminary in uh, over in Dallas, where many, many multitudes of young men were trained for the ministry. And of course, every one of them was given a Schofield reference Bible, which was, of course, it is a King James Bible. No issue there. But the notes that Schofield in, had, number one, he, he criticized the text of the King James Bible. He was not a King James Bible believer. He believed that there were all these errors in it, and he would uh, routinely correct the text. He basically admits in his introduction that he, the only reason he used the King James to publish his notes is because it was the most popular Bible at the time, and he wanted to get his notes out uh, into circulation as much as possible. Um, but the, his notes, of course, taught, much like Darby had taught, a pre-tribulation rapture that isn't actually there, and the dangerous, idolatrous heresy of Zionism. And so when you're reading the notes of the Schofield Bible, which, I mean, to many preachers, even, even today, they treat Schofield's notes as, as, as scripture, in a sense, they use it as a they use Schofield as a crutch to make up for their ignorance because they've not studied to show themselves approved unto God as the Bible commands.